What's up, everyone? My name is Lauren Wilson. I ran Division One track at the University of Texas at Austin. I've run 50 miles at a sub seven minute per mile pace. I've run 100 kilometers or 62 miles at a seven minute and 15 second per mile pace. I've run 236 and 237 for the marathon, respectively. And this is just my weekly training vlog as I train for the Black Canyon 100 kilometer on February 8th, 2025. In this specific episode, I put in a Google document kind of what my plans are here over the next seven months. My A races, my B races, the key performance indicators or the KPIs that I'll be trying to, to hit. And it's a dynamic general outline just to try to wrap my mind around what I need to do, what I need to build up to. And then my goal for this series, this weekly series, is I hope that you can abstract some lessons to apply to your own running, kind of learning from my journey, learning from my experiences. And then also this this helps me. So the teacher and the student that's not, you kind of switch hats back and forth. And by sharing my journey, I hope to learn some things about myself and my training plan, but also just to add more meaning and more purpose to my training as well. And so let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen here right away. And so what I, what I did today is, again, my general training outline, dynamic training outline, Today's date, Sunday, July 21st, 2024. The A race is Black Canyon, 100 kilometer. And so right now we are 31 weeks, five days out or seven months and one week out. And so you want to put your A race down on the calendar and you want to work backwards and, and to the present day. So, okay, seven months out, this is the demands or the specific demands of the event that I'm trying to build up towards, what do I need to hit along the way? Where do I need to be four weeks out? Where do I need to be eight weeks out, 12 weeks out? And then kind of current coming back to the current day, what do I need to start building on today to stack that foundation, stack that volume, to be able to have the experience that I want to have? I think that it's important to put out there because one of the most common questions I get, so I'm also a run coach and I am a biomechanics expert. And, and so this is what I do. And, um, one of the common questions I get is, well, I want to, I want to run a marathon or I want to run ultra. And it's important to note that there's four different outcomes you could have. We could go run a hundred kilometers next week, but there's a, there's a certain experience. It's probably not going to be very good. It's probably going to hurt a lot. It's probably going to take me a long time to recover from. And my probability of injury is going to skyrocket because I don't have the necessary preparation. So there's four different outcomes. I can finish the race. I can finish the race healthy. I can finish the race fast, or I could finish the race fast and healthy. And so every one of those experiences, those four different outcomes have a different training demand from uh from you or from me etc and so for me really my goal is to finish in a reasonably fast time and get out of the event healthy but for me at this point in my in my running journey so i was i've had a on and off again relationship with running i i ran uh ended up leaving the university of texas team after my sophomore year got into coaching and then I was into cycling and the Spartan races for a while, came back to ultra, then COVID hit. I lost my my job and decided to go work in public accounting for three years where my body gradually got weaker and weaker. And now I'm coming back to ultra and I've made a conscious decision that I'm staying in the fitness and health industry. No matter what, this is where I'm happiest. This is where I have the most skill sets and I hope to apply my business background and experience to the health and fitness industry to to change lives, understanding that business is the foundation of of everything. So that that's where I'm at is over three years my body has gotten weaker. My efficiency has gotten weaker. And and for me, uh what that means is um 
right? I I still wasn't necessarily like super weak, able to run like 22 miles at a 555 average before bonking at the 2022 CIM last year, 2023. Really, just there was a lot of stress going on in general in my life, and a lot of just questions had to be asked. And um, moved from Flagstaff, Arizona, down to Phoenix, and so now I'm trying to get back to to ultra, and I'm committed to this lifestyle right now. So that's where I'm at. And going back to this, so right, the A race, Black Canyon, demands of the event on feet for eight to 10 hours, course profile. It's going to be downhill fast for the first 20 miles. It levels out and then sneaky hills after 40 miles, especially from miles 50 to 60. And so the downhill running demands is, you don't want to blow out your quads and your ankles on the downhills. It's it's easy to get very excited with the adrenaline of race day and to overcook it early and then to not have anything in the last 10 miles. And so that last 10 to 12 miles is really going to be the entire race. It's just getting through the first 50 miles with enough energy and with enough mental willpower left to really throw down the hammer, executing on water, executing on not getting blisters against skin abrasions, executing on making sure your gut doesn't turn upside down, that you didn't cook a little too early, and that you have something left for those last 10 to 12 miles to really bring it bring it home. Like I was saying last week, uh, average pace anywhere from 7.30 to 9, 9.30 pace, but there's going to be variability throughout the race so you might have some miles that are sub seven you might have some miles that are 10 minutes just due to the terrain and the footing of the course but really what what i need to hit over the next seven months is muscular endurance strength fat burning capacity gut capacity to to digest carbohydrate to nutrients in through the system the pounding on the downhills like i was saying my quads and my ankles avoiding blisters training the gut Hydration with fluids per hour and electrolytes per hour. Pacing, so not getting too excited, uh, not not going too fast when you're feeling good. In ultra, the key is to minimize the lows, not to maximize the highs. Because let's say you're running a seven minute per mile pace, and someone else is running ten minutes. That's three minutes per per mile over the course of let's just say ten miles um 10 times three that's 30 minutes if you if you go too hard and you sit in an aid station for 30 minutes you've lost your entire lead right so you want to minimize the low moments rather than maximize the high moments in in ultra so trying to maintain that even keel which is a very good reflection of just my personality in life i'm 33 now i'll be 34 on august 4th and a lot of my 20s are characterized by having really high highs in life and, and pretty low moments and just trying to stay more even keeled in general. And I feel like ultra running is a good reflection of your personality in general. So just trying to work on that. My B races, I signed up for the Flagstaff to stagecoach 55 kilometer. And the goal for that is to practice race day logistics and as of today i am eight weeks six days out so let's just say nine weeks out and this is going to be a really good opportunity a really good indicator of what i need to work on over the next two months to get ready for the specific block right so i'm eight weeks out and then it'll be another eight weeks or so until i'm 12 weeks out from my a race which is when you enter the specific block where you're training your body for the, as much as possible for the specific demands of the sport. And so what is 55 kilometers? It's 34.18 miles. Course record is three hours and 30 minutes by one of the best, if not the best, ultra runner in the world, Jim Walmsley in 2016, which is a 609 per mile pace. But if you look at the historical results, this is about 30 minutes faster than any other time on the course course starts out at 7,500 feet and it's going to go up to 9,000 feet for the first five miles. It goes straight up and then it rolls for about seven miles and then bombs down 
for 22 miles from 9,000 feet altitude down to, to 6,000 feet. And the winning time historically has been about four hours to four hours and 20 minutes or about a seven minute pace to a seven minute 35 second per mile pace. And as you can see, this is the course elevation profile. Like I was saying, if we zoom in here, maybe not. It is going to be 7,500 feet, five miles goes up, and then we come around and then kind of bomb down, right? So eight weeks to get ready for that. Um, as we take a look at my training this week, we kind of see where I'm at. It is about 90 degree low where I live. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and literally the low at 4 a.m. for the temperature is about 90 degrees. And so you can't really have the best indicator but over the next eight weeks or so, my goal is to get up to Flagstaff four times over the next eight weeks to get a good feel for the altitude and how I adjust coming up the day before and getting some time on feet at that elevation on the trails as well with the footing and seeing how heat training and elevation training compare to each other. In my experience, one of the biggest limiting factors is temperature and heat limiting your nervous system and over frying the system. I feel that you can push a lot harder at altitude compared to the heat, especially when you're running at these more of these marathon paces and everything. And so typically what you'll see, and everyone's different, but over the course of a marathon, you might expect 20 to 30 seconds a mile for altitude but with the temperature conversion it'll probably be around 55 to 60 degrees for most of the day and so that is kind of what the temperature is early in the morning in Flagstaff right now what you'll see is a significant drop in pace given a given an effort so I did run about let's see, 12 miles a couple weeks ago up in St. Louis, Missouri, and it was in the 80s, and I was able to run a six-minute per mile pace, and that was about a month ago, and I feel like I've gained a lot of fitness since then, but with the temperatures, with the low of 90, even just breaking like seven-minute pace on a longer run, which I consider anything over an hour, uh, that's when you'll really start to feel the temperature. It's just hard to maintain anything. Um, at that pace. So anyways, that's the goal eight weeks from now. Just want to keep this going. I am going to do rim to rim to rim as well in November. And the goal for that, another B event. So right, I have my A race and then I have three B events that I want to have quality experiences. They have different goals. For rim to rim to rim, I just want to have fun with other people and I want to have a life experience and I want to come out of it not too sore. And so what is rim to rim to rim? It's 44 miles across the Grand Canyon. So we'll go from south rim to north rim back to the south rim. And there's going to be about 10,500 feet of elevation. Typically, what you'll see is about 10 to 12 hours of effort on feet if you're just kind of doing it for fun. So it'll be a good time to gain self-awareness, see how strong and durable my body is about 12 weeks out from my A race. And again, I'm just taking it easy. I'm not trying to go to the well that day. So I'll, I'll take it as easy as possibly that you possibly can over the course of 44 miles in elevation of 10,500 feet. That'll be a really good opportunity to work on blisters, again, hydration, fueling, that kind of stuff. And then next thing that's really fun that I signed up for this week is the High Rocks Anaheim Pro Division. So you might be seeing a lot of that. And there's this hybrid athlete movement. And um, I think it's a net positive, if I'm being honest. I think that anything that gets people excited about fitness and, and about health is really cool. And by one v analysis of the term elite, Technically, I guess if you are in the top 10% of fitness, you are elite and 90% of people can learn from you. But to kind of like parade yourself as this athlete that is in the top 1% of echelon of athletes, I think that, I don't know, that rubs people the wrong way. But I won't dive too deep into that. But I, 
I find myself kind of being like, yo, are you actually like hybrid? Like, what does that even mean? And so I just want to get out there and compete. I did want to do like the doubles division or the open division because of the lighter weight and everything. Cause I'm not that big. I'm only a hundred, I'm five foot seven, 140 pounds, 145 pounds full of water, salt and carbohydrates. Uh, but the pro division was the only one open and I have a bunch of friends that are going to Anaheim to do this event. So I wanted to throw my hat in the ring. That's December 7th, 2024. We're about 20 weeks away from that. And that's going to be nine weeks out from my a race. And so what are the demands of the Hyrox pro? So it's going to be eight by one kilometer runs. And typically what I've seen in the pro divisions on YouTube is those kilometer runs are at about a 520 to 530 per mile pace. And then you have workouts after each kilometer. So what are the workouts after each kilometer? We have ski rig for about a thousand meters, sled push two by 25 meters. And then this is, this is where it kind of gets funny. So 202 kilograms, which is 445 pounds, which is literally three times my body weight. So 140 times three would be 420 pounds. So a little bit over three times my body weight. I'm not even going to lie. I don't even know if I can actually like push that yet. So it's going to be really fun to, to build up for that. And so what was my motivation behind training for a high rocks? So like I already mentioned, I'm not I'm not in my 20s anymore. I'm going to be 34 in just a couple weeks and we know that chronic distance running. So I've been running since I was 12 years old. I ran a 520 mile when I was 12 years old, ran a 452 mile when I was 13 years old. So I've been running at a relatively high level for over 20 years now and we know for a fact that running is a very catabolic exercise. And so what does that mean? Is it, is it breaks down your hormones? And thankfully the generation before me was able to figure out that it can destroy your testosterone. And so I have been able to adjust my training accordingly, because at the end of the day, I want to be healthy. That's my number one goal. I'm very competitive, but it's not, it's not competitive in the sense of, I want to beat the other person per se. It's, it's a healthy competition in terms of I want to compete against other people because that's going to push me to a higher level and vice versa. I want to be the best version of myself so that I can push other people forward as well and expand human consciousness and expand the human imagination. So the hybrid training, I do believe personally that it's actually the healthiest thing that you can do as a human being, and it's going to help your performance as you get older. And so as you get older, you lose bone density. As you get older, you lose muscle mass. Your hormones, such as testosterone and human growth hormone, anabolic hormones will start to decrease. And so you want to lift weights and you want to do high-intensity exercises or anaerobic exercises uh, in addition to your aerobic base. And I feel like it's it actually helps you in, or at least me, because I'm not typically – shaped like a traditional distance runner. I actually am just like more thick and it's hard for me to, to lean out like these skinny, skinny distance runners that you see. And I've always been a little bit more strength based and a little bit more weight room based and a little bit thicker. And so for my body type and my muscle fiber type, right, you have slow twitch, fast twitch, intermediate twitch. I feel like I am more of a intermediate twitch fiber and muscle breakdown being one of the limiting factors in ultra running, I feel that it's important to lift weights so that you build up the, the strength of that muscle fiber and of your nervous system. And so it's just going to be fun way to train. So anyways, we have sled pull, 337 pounds. Again, I really don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, eight or meter, eight or 80 meter burpee broad jump. So that's going to be about 70 to 100 burpees if we jump about... 0.8 to 1.2 meters per jump, which is about three feet, right? 39 inches, thousand meters of rowing. Going to have to really work on that technique and form 200 meter kettlebell farmers carry two by 32 kilogram kettlebells, which is going to be about 70 and a half pounds per, um, per kettlebell. So I, I accidentally put per kilogram, but it's per kettlebell. 
And so that's literally carrying my body weight for 200 meters. And really, I, I did it last week at the CrossFit gym that I train out of. And it wasn't that bad, to be honest. It was really just the grip. My grip strength isn't quite there. So that'll be something to build up on. 100 meters of sandbag lunges with 30 kilograms is about 66 pounds. That's going to be about 100 to 120 lunges or 50 to 60 lunges per leg, assuming um, about three meters or about one meter per step, I would say, or a little bit under one meter per step, which isn't that big of, um, that's an estimate because I am five foot seven. So about half my height with each step seems reasonable for a lunge. 100 wall balls with nine kilograms or 20 pounds squat down to at least 90 degrees and get the ball up to the target. So with the running, and with the exercises, there's going to be a lot of triple flexion. So flexion at my ankle, my knee, and my hip. So I need to make sure that my calves don't get locked up because that's going to limit the ability for my ankle to dorsiflex, which can put a lot of strain on that anterior tibialis in those extensors, which is the classic shin splints in the front of the leg. And so with squats, with rowing, and with running, that is a lot of stress and different types of stress through that, again, that anterior tibialis, that traditional shin splint area, and the hip flexor. So just wanting to build up that capacity over time. And then lastly, my main goals for my Black Canyon 100-kilometer, my A race, process, consistency, training, see where the fitness is, and to decide a realistic time goal. So I don't want to shoot out a time. I have a general idea right now. Um, but to respect people that have actually run the race and to respect the distance, you want to approach it humbly, right? You just, you don't know, you should just go in with the attitude of, or I am going in with the attitude, your experience is different than mine, your approach is different from mine. I've approached, all trail, I've approached races from a point of humbleness, saying that I just want to see how training goes and then let the time figure itself out as we get close and have a general idea. And I've approached it from, I'm going to try to win no matter what. And the first approach for me has worked out from both a mental stress standpoint and from a performance standpoint. When I go in just trying to win, ready to die, it um it can get good results, but it's it's high risk, high reward. And I find that I don't enjoy that as much personally. And it hasn't always ended up in the most results. It's ended up in a lot of collateral damage on an individual level and to those around me as well. Because it's it's this is a, this is an army. It takes a whole army of team of friends of sacrifice from your friends, your family, your coworkers for something like this to to come about. It's not in isolation. And so I want to have as little. I want to enjoy the experience at the end of the day. And I find when I approach it from that humble mindset trying to enjoy the experience that the results actually end up being better as well so 12 weeks before february 8th 2025 is going to be november 16th 2024 when i'll enter the specific block and at this time i want to get out on the course as much as possible i live about 25 minutes 30 minutes from the finish line about an hour and 15 minutes from the start line so rim to rim to rim will launch the final stages of training high rock's going to be um nine weeks out so keys to hit to build to in the last three to four weeks before black canyon i want to run 50 kilometers on the front half i want to follow that 50 kilometer effort up the next day with some cycling or some sort of activity whether it's cycling or some sort of strength circuit or more running i don't want it to be a low level exercise such as like yoga or walking because I want to prepare my body. What does it feel like to be fatigued yet still have possibly another three to five hours of activity with heavy legs, with possible dehydration, those kinds of things. And then another key indicator that I want to hit in the last three to four weeks is I want to run 50 kilometers on the back half. So I want full exposure to the course before I go into the event itself. And that's going to be a huge advantage against other people but also it's going to be a huge advantage mentally for myself just knowing what to expect the it's really hard mentally to go in to unknowns 
So I for my first 100 miler, I built up to 40 miles in a day. And so it was like literally every single step after 40 miles was an unknown. And it ended up turning out really well. However, the next attempt, it was a lot easier because it's like I know what to expect. I know that I that I can do it and I know how to troubleshoot. Other goals, I want to get through the training block without flying too close to the sun, also known as leaving my race in training. I am, I've done that a lot, and I have found that a mature athlete or a mature person, you want to go into the race healthy, hungry, ready to fight. You don't want to leave your race in training. Leaving your race in training is comes from comes from fear. At the end of the day, yes, you want to push the boundaries, but at this point in my life, I know where that boundary is. I've been doing this long enough, and I could have said that six, seven years ago. Even six, seven years ago, I'd been doing it long enough to know exactly where that boundary was, but to continue to leave races in in training is just a sign of immaturity, and that immaturity stems from fear, fear of expectations, false expectations, because at the end of the day, for myself, there's an audience of one, and that's God. I don't really care about what anyone else thinks. There doesn't matter. And to continue to have this external validation or this ego needing to be massaged, that's that's fear at the end of the day. Fear, very complex. So just don't cross that. It doesn't matter. It's not. That's not what it's about at the end of the day. And um. Again, I just want to build up the back-to-back weeks of 31-mile efforts on the course over the next six months or so. And so what what am I working on now? Biomechanics. So when those last 12, 16 weeks hit, I want to have good biomechanics. And so for me, I'll have to get a video of my mechanics. But what it is is I have an uneven hips and I have uneven spines and I get spiraled. So I tend to favor my right side. So the right ankle, the right hip gets tight. It pulls the pelvis forward, right to left, which brings my spine to from left to right. And then you can see some abnormal heel whipping as a result. So getting my internal and external rotators even on my hips, because that's what's going to allow you to stack the volume and stack the speed. I want good training consistency. I want a good schedule. I want a good mindset. I'm going to do some hybrid circuit type training, get some time on trails that says trials, but time on trails, have some short intervals. So short 30 second sprints building up to three to four minutes in length, which is what about one kilometer should take me um, during the high high rocks event itself. But talk is cheap. I don't know how the body's going to respond to those workouts, we'll continue to gather data and then longer run uh, time on feet on the trail. So dynamic schedule, which means be flexible as life happens, I'm not a pro athlete. And so I have other obligations outside of this. I, I don't have a family or anything like that, but most of my obligations are business related, community related and church related. So I'm a leader in all three of those domains and so there are uh, other obligations and then also a lot of family members do reach out to me a lot of friends do reach out to me and so being emotionally available for them not being so caught up in this race that I don't have that emotional availability for them and so what is it going to look like now Monday miles drills and short sprints in the morning and so I will be doing two a days every single day Part of that is because I'm doing 75 hard with 15 other people right now, but also it's just I believe in movement of the body. I work a lot at my computer, and so trying to unwind the perils, not so much of sitting, but being in one position for too long. So yeah, Monday, so the PM, work on mechanics, weights, high rock circuit training. Tuesday in the AM, do some cycling or light cardio with some jiu-jitsu. And then stretching, praying, visualizing in the afternoons. Wednesday, kind of same as Monday, um, but instead of short sprints, 30 seconds or less, have some more continuous efforts of two to four minutes of pushing at marathon pace, which again, 545 to six minute per mile pace with some 
one half to or one to one ratio. So let's say I push for three minutes. I'm either going to rest for 90 seconds to three minutes of active jogging recovery. Um, that's just where I'm at right now, trying to work on threshold training and a lactic threshold and aerobic threshold training. Thursday, same as Tuesday. So cycling, walking, jujitsu. Friday is a very, very light recovery day. Very, very light walking or stretching and some jujitsu drills. PM is, yes, I say rest, but it's going to be more of foam rolling or meditation, journaling, getting ready for Saturday, logistic wise. Saturday, I need to start t- building up my time on feet, get out on dirt or trails at least four times over the next eight weeks before that Flagstaff race, taking it easier on the trails for logistics and time and body awareness. And so what I mean by body awareness is I do a lot of training without any music. Why is that? Because I feel that we can start to numb ourselves and we can start to override what our body is telling us. At this point in my running journey, I already know how to push myself beyond the limits to the point of I've been hospitalized for running and I've passed out multiple times. So I know how to push myself. Really what I need to learn is where where is my body telling me and when are those signals coming up and how do I troubleshoot so that I don't cross that that boundary. So I do a lot of running without music for that reason. And then I also want to get control over my mind. I want to capture the thoughts and I want to be able to enter flow state. And I want to be able to wrestle with those thoughts myself rather than numb myself to those thoughts. And I feel like that is a huge advantage in the long run, not just for running, because personally running is just a medium to become the best version of myself and other out all other aspects of my life. So for instance, Am I the best man of God that I possibly can be? Am I the best future husband and future father that I possibly can be? Am I the best friend and son and brother and uncle and business leader, community leader, church leader that I possibly can be? Running is just a classroom to practice those skills for what really matters in life. And and my identity has been wrapped up in running in the past, and it's been my God, and it's been my idol and it's and it's how I've defined my worth. I can't have that anymore. It's not it's not healthy, it's not conductive, it's not the experience that I'm looking for. And so Sunday, as needed, walking, yoga, or cycling, but keeping the intensity low. And so tentatively, here's the race profile. You can see, like I was saying, um going into the race, get out on the course in the last eight weeks at least four times if not six times, with two of those times being the front half of the race and the back half of the race. And then I have aid stations mapped out already, the distance. So one of the things will be what fuel do I want to carry with me from aid station to aid station, and then what is going to be at each aid station. Do I want to just kind of go without anything? Do I want to take something? How long will it be between aid stations before I see friends and crew? And that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's where it's at. Let's go ahead and dive into what my training looked like for this past week. And so, again, we're really far out. How far out are we? Seven months, one week. So I got another four weeks of just kind of unstructured training for the most part. But this is what it's going to continue to look like. Really, the biggest change that I'm going to make is starting to add more cycling and more cross training cardio to the to the mix in addition to more time on feet on the weekends. And so Monday I did 6 miles at about a 647 pace and I'll, again I'll show you kind of what that looks like here. For me I always start off relatively easy and then bring down the pace as the body allows as the body gives up. This past Monday, it was freaking cold to us. It was only like 82 to 84 degrees in the morning. And like I was saying, the low's been at 90. So I was like, oh, I got to take advantage of this. I got to open up. So that was the first six miles just to get some miles in for the day. And then I did a mile of drills on a hill. So side shuffles, karaoke, butt kicks, skips, high knees. 
that works my body in different planes of motion, giving me a higher rel a higher absolute capacity for the complete muscle function. That way I'm using a smaller relative percentage of the absolute muscle function in that different plane of motion. And a better athlete is a faster athlete. And then I finished with a steady um, 522 miles. So that was Monday. A Monday afternoon, did some weight training, and I did some 10-second sprints on the assault treadmill, self-propelled treadmill, just to work on mechanics, and then also to make some videos for some assessments. Uh, Tuesday, did a walk and then some jiu-jitsu. Wednesday morning, I was really, really tired, so got in six miles uh, of the same, kind of the same thing as Monday. And again, showing you, but wasn't able to kind of bring it down as much. Six miles and then another. Another mile of hill on drills and then another mile steady. So you could tell my body was kind of tired, but got in the consistency. It's no one day. It's no one workout. It's the sum of your training that is going to, to determine the experience that you have. Then did my weight training Thursday, went for another walk, did my jiu-jitsu. Friday, went for a walk, then did foam rolling Friday night. And then Saturday, started at 5 a.m. It was still 90 degrees at 5 a.m. You can see it took a while for my body to, to wake up. Uh, I preloaded with water and salt first form pre-workout, which has creatine, beta alanine, lion's mane, cordyceps, a bunch of mushrooms that help with aerobic endurance. And you can tell started off pretty easy. My form felt really good though. So I've been having a externally rotated right leg. And I know that's because I don't have enough internal rotator, external rotator balance. So my my glute maximus, glute medius doesn't do a good job of controlling internal rotation of my right knee, so it collapses into valgus. And so just working on getting the adductors and the rotators to stabilize my knee neutral, that has been working really well. But because my leg is in a different position that it's been in, um, the proper muscles are being used and they haven't been used in a while. So there is a little bit of adductor soreness that I am monitoring right now. But you can see started off, and then had really good energy at the end, was able to close a six-minute mile, even at the end of 15 miles in 90-degree heat. So I'm in a really great spot, an hour, 44 minutes. I'm in a really great spot aerobically. Today I feel good, no lingering soreness, not limping, anything like that. And so then Saturday night did more phone rolling and everything, and then this morning I did another walk and then tonight I will do some stretching for my hip flexors, my adductors, and my glute med, glute max. So yeah, that was the that's the plan. That was the training week. I hope you got something out of it. I hope that um, provided some value. If you watched this far, thank you so much. I look forward to to going on this journey with you guys and continuing to share. And let's get after it. Happy running, healthy running. I hope you guys have a great week. And I love y'all. Let's go.